raise up. Amen. Come on in. Come on in. God bless you. Let's get ready for Bible study tonight. Amen. 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 I see you. I see you. Sister Adams. Hello. Hello. God bless you, ma'am. Good to see you tonight. I hope Mother Mildred is with you. Bless you. Amen. It's good to see you coming in tonight. Amen. Come on in the room, everybody. Come on in the room. God bless you. God bless you. I see you, sis. What's up, Deacon Fred? God bless you, man. Amen. Sister King, God bless you. Amen. It's so good to see everybody coming in. Sister Reagan, bless you, ma'am. Amen. Let let um somebody know that Green Grove Bible Study is coming on. We're getting ready to get started here momentarily. Amen. 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 I see you, Mother Mildred. God bless you, ma'am. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Sister Taylor, hello. Sister Jerome, God bless you, ma'am. Amen. Hello, hello. King family, Willie King family, God bless you. Amen. It's so good to see everybody coming in. I hope everybody had a great day today. Amen. We certainly did. Ah, uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Let them know. Let them know. Green Grove is coming on Bible study. Boy, we got some stuff to talk about tonight. Brother Miller, God bless you, man. God bless you, sir. Amen. Charles Lawson, God bless you, man. Good to see you coming in tonight. Amen. We appreciate everybody logging in. Amen. Sister PB, God bless you. So good to see everyone coming in. Amen. We're going to continue on in our series in just a moment. Amen. Hello, Anna. God bless you. Anna, bless you, ma'am. Amen. 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 I see you, Charles. God bless you, sir. Amen. Let's pray, pray real quick here. Father, we just thank you. We praise you for tonight. God, we loose your presence in this place. We declare tonight, God, that we'll hear your word, that you'll teach us and we shall be taught. Bless us, God. Keep us by your spirit tonight. Less of us and more of you is our prayer tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Taylor, Wanda Taylor, God bless you. Sister Sledge, hello, Pat Johnson, bless you, sis. Brother Baker, Brittany Tharp, bless you. And Pam, Pam Lawson, Pamela Lawson, good to see you, sis. Amen. It's so good to see everybody coming on. Sister Ridley, I see you coming in tonight. Sister Baldwin, God bless you, ma'am. Listen, we're, we're going to get started with my lesson tonight. Amen. We're so excited about what God is doing uh, with his people. We are excited about um, this series that we're on. Why is it hard to do the right thing? Amen. We, we, are, we are thankful. So far, we've gone through um, four installments of this series. Amen. Um, uh, last week, a week before last, we talked about love. Uh, we don't love the way God wants us to love. Uh, then we talked about joy. Amen. Sometimes we'll, we'll, we we can't do the right thing because we've allowed people to steal our joy. Uh, on last week, my goodness, my goodness, you missed last week. You missed a blessing. Amen. On last week, we talked about, amen, peace, uh, understanding how to maintain and walk in the peace of God how to understand and walk in the peace of God. Amen. Tonight, 
I want to deal with the fruit of the spirit in the singular, the fruit of the spirit um, called patience. Amen. I see folks coming in. Amen. Patience. Come on in the room. Make sure you hit that like button. Let me know you were in class. Amen. Patience. We're going to deal with the fruit of the spirit called patience. Our anchor scripture for tonight is found in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22 and verse number 23. We're going to go through all these, uh, the fruit of the spirit, but but we're going to focus tonight solely on patience. And Galatians 5 and 22 says, but the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. Amen. So tonight, our singular focus tonight is going to be on the fruit of the spirit called patience. I said to you on last week, be careful about praying and asking God for more patience. Certainly, God is a prayer answering, prayer hearing God. The issue is, if I want more patience, my goodness, and some of you have asked God for patience, and then you've got to understand, what do you ask God to do when you ask for patience? Um, let, me, let me share this with you. I remember years ago, a brother asked, he said, Pastor, I want to be like you. I want to do some of the things that you're doing, and I want God to use me like that and so forth. And I, he said, pray that God will use me the same way. I want to be just, and, and, and I said, man, you don't want me to pray that prayer because I'll have to pray that God allow you to go through some of the things that I've gone through, that, that you'll have to have folk walk away from you, that you'll, you'll almost lose everything you have, that you'll see your ministry turn upside down, that you'll, 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 you'll be up sometime and down sometime. All these things that, 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 um, that, that I've gone through in my life that brought me to where I am now, I had to go through those things in order to get where I am now. If you want more patience, my God, if you want God to give you more patience, what you are in fact asking God is, is God put me through some stuff <laughs> so that my patience can grow. The only way that your patience is expanded only way that your patience is broadened, the only way that you learn how to be patient is God got to send you through hell and high water. You got to go through some things in order to learn how to hold yourself together. You've got to go through some things to understand that, that listen, patience is not just a gift that God just drops on you. It is something that is developed in you. And I've got to go through a trial. I've got to go through some heartache. I've got to go through some disappointment. I've got to deal with some rejection. All of these things culminate in me learning how to be patient. And so when you pray and you ask God, you, you, you be careful because sometimes when you pray and ask God for patience, it seems like everything starts going crazy in your life. People start tripping with you. People start acting funny with you. Stuff that you could de depend on before, now you can't depend on it. And it's all a direct response to the prayer that you prayed. And so, 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 so God is going to put us through something and he allows us to grow, but be careful. Don't just run up into God. Give me supernatural, extraordinary kind of patience. And then all of a sudden, boom. Boom, boom, things starts happening. And that's how patience works. That's how we come to mature in our faith, mature in the things of God, because God puts us through some situations that develop our patience, just like we must develop our faith. So let's look at this and, 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 and look at what this, this, this means. The Greek word, literally uh, for patience or long-suffering means to be long-tempered. 
the, the, the word literally means to be long tempered. It is the direct opposite of being short tempered. There are too many people that that they, they are quick tempered. They fly out the handle. They are short fuse. They just snap and they go off. They go from, from zero to a hundred like that. And 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 and, and, but when you have patience or uh, the interchangeable word is long suffering, when you operate in patience or long suffering, you understand that now my temper has to be stretched. In other words, what used to set me off, now God is going to grow me until I can walk by what used to set me off. Y'all better help me tonight. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we get so mad and so, so perturbed and so beside ourselves uh, because of something that happened. And God is saying, listen, that thing should not trip you up the way that is tripping you up. Some people should not have the kind of ability to just make you mad. You see them and they set you off. You hear their voice and you, you get upset. They, God is saying, listen, here you are now. You've empowered them. You've empowered them to expose where you really are. Hear me tonight. I'm going somewhere, y'all. You, 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 you have empowered people. And when you, when people set you off, you empower them to show where you still alive at. And, 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 and when I don't have patience, the right people at the wrong time will expose me. The right situation at the wrong time will expose me. The right conversation at the wrong time will expose me. And so here God is saying, listen, you've got to learn how to be long-tempered. Here, another definition, it, it is defined as, as, as patience, as forbearance. Long suffering, slowness in avenging wrongs. Come on, help me tonight. In other words, I, I, I have been wrong, but I'm not quick to try to get even. I'm not quick to try to settle scores. I'm not quick to run down somebody else. And, 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 and this is something I'm telling you. Every time the devil uses what he knows is not developed, Hear me, hear me, beloved. He he uses what he knows is not developed in us. And so he'll send you an invitation to an argument. And because you are not patient, because you're not long-tempered, every time you get invited to an argument, you go. Every time you get into a, 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 a situation where it, 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 it's my chance to walk away, Walk by, be quiet, say, God, you got this. No, no, no. I'm not, you're not going to say that to me. You're not going to do that to me. And we respond because we haven't learned patience. And the enemy exposes us. You can blame the devil all you want to, but he is exposing what's really there. It's easy to talk that stuff. It's easy to say that I'm patient. Ooh, I thank God I'm patient when you're not being tried. Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get hit. Every one of us got something that, 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 that God is trying to develop in us. And if God is working with you in patience, you got to understand the only way he's going to get you out of that short temper is he's got to cause you to go through some things that develop and strengthen the cords of your temper. Lord help us. So I gotta learn what. Watch this right here. Let me show another another definition I found. Uh, long suffering or patience is the quality of watch this y'all of self restraint in the face of provocation, which does not hastily retaliate or promptly punish. In other words. Something happens and I restrain. I sometimes we want you, you touch me, I'm gonna touch you. You say something to me, I'm gonna say something to you. You get in my, I'm gonna get at you. But when we practice patience, patience shows us self-restraint. And so even when somebody's trying to push my buttons, even when they're trying to, to provoke me, 
And see, the only way you're going to really walk in patience is, I, 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 oh, God, help me. The only way you're going to really walk in patience is you've got to know your own self. You've got to be familiar with your own self. Because too often and too many times, we find out that we don't have what we thought we had, but we find out at the wrong time. So he said, you got to show some restraint. You got to show, you got to be able to tell yourself, be quiet. You got to be able to tell yourself, walk off. You got to tell yourself, not today, devil. And, and, and in the face of somebody trying to provoke you, in the face of somebody trying to draw you, hear me now, trying to draw you out of character. Can I tell you this right here? Let me throw this in here for free. Somebody put this on the comment line for me. Just because you got saved does not mean you forgot how to cuss. Come on, help me tonight. Just because you got saved does not mean you forgot how to fight. Just because you got saved don't mean you forgot how to get somebody absolutely flat out told. But what happens is I've got to learn how to control and restrain myself so that when I want to go off, my God, when I want to slap back, when I want to clap back, I control myself in the face of provocation. And that's where we've got to go. That's what we've got to do. And so, so how do we do this? Give me, Pastor. I, I hear what you're saying, but people will get on your nerve. Won't they do it? <laughs> people will get on your nerve, and somebody said they'll get on your last nerve. I understand all of that. We're all flesh. We're all human. Woo! Woo! And boy, we all got our breaking points. And sometimes if you keep letting folk gnaw on you, gnaw on you, it can push you. But let's look at, look, look at, look at this. Let's look at some examples. Some examples of long suffering. Because if God is spirit and God is long suffering, if God is patient and I name God as my father, then I should in turn also exhibit or demonstrate some of the same characteristic that God does. I, I need to learn how to be patient. You need to learn how to be patient or to be long suffering. So let's look at this thing and see. Ah, yeah, let's look at this thing. Look at this thing and see. How was God long suffering? How was God long suffering? Don't y'all remember in the days of Noah? He, he, was, he was patient. Woo, he was patient. He was patient. If you look at 1 Peter 3 and 20, 1 Peter 3 and 20, it says, because we firm, formerly did not obey God when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Here God, God says, I'm going to be patient. Noah, I want you to preach the same sermon. Same sermon, Noah. I want you to preach the same sermon 120 years. Same sermon every Sunday. Same sermon. Same points. Same exity. Tell them it's going to rain. Tell them to repent. Tell them to turn. And God said, I'm going to stay my hand while this ark is being built. 120 years. Same message. And they just went around like it was nothing. 120 years, they disobeyed God. 120 years, they just did what they wanted to do. And doesn't that sound just like a whole lot of us today? We're still trying to do what we want to do. We hear the message. We hear the clarion call. And yet we continue doing what we want to do. And God is saying, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. 
but they didn't heed it. And you all know the story. Eventually, the ark was finished. The cargo was loaded. Noah and his sons and their wives and his wife got in the boat. And God told Noah, he said, listen, I am going to be the one that's going to shut this thing. I'm going to seal it. He said, I know you got some kinfolk out there that didn't do right. You got some friends that didn't do. Noah, I'm going to seal this door because your heart might betray you. God sealed the door and it began to rain. But God was patient. He was long suffering. When God dealt with Israel, you all remember. He dealt with Israel in the book of uh, Nehemiah chapter nine. He starts talking about how they were stiff necked. He starts talking about how they wouldn't obey the commands of God. He talks about how they were, they were, they were wanted miracles to be performed. They wanted, they wanted to be entertained. They wanted things to be done in their midst, but they really wasn't serious about changing. And God was slow to anger. He was merciful and he led them through the wilderness. Look at them now, leaving Egypt. Look at them now, carrying the wealth of Egypt out. And while they were going, God said, I'm gonna supply all of your needs. This whole journey, clothes didn't wear out, shoes didn't wear out. We want water, water comes from a rock. We tired of just bread and water. Now we will, God, we want, we want some meat. Then God began to send a quail, send quail, and they began to complain over and over and over again. So much so until God said, listen, I'm going to give you so much quail, that quail is going to run out of your nose. That's literally what he said. But his patience was, was there. He didn't kill them. And he kept going on. Pull of cloud by day, pull of fire by night. They murmuring and complaining. But eventually, for 40 years, and then they finally got to the place God was trying to take them. Here Moses, he got impatient with the people. God told him to speak to the rock. And Moses let these people get on his nerve. Be careful when you let people get on your nerve. Because sometimes people will cause you to miss out on what God had promised. And so Moses got to go up on a mountain and look over into the promised land. But God would not allow him to go in because of what he did. But God was long suffering. Watch what happens. Not only was God long suffering with them, but God is long suffering today as well. Today, God is long suffering. He, he's patient with us. And I wanna show you, that, that if I am trying to be like God, I've got, I've got to ask myself, why am I so short with people? Why do I get so frustrated so quick? Why is it everything got to be right now, right now, right now, right now, right now? No, no kind of process. I just want an event. I want it to happen. No kind of maturing. I just want it right now. And we are raising a generation now. We're raising and we're engulfed and surrounded by a generation of people that want everything right now. And God is saying, listen, you've got to learn how to be patient because truth be told, everything in your life is not going to happen at once. Now look what happened. Look what happened. He's patient with us. In, in, in 2 Peter um, 3 and 9, it says, the law is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you and not willing any, not and, and, and not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Here God is saying, listen, he said, I'm not slack concerning my promises. He said, I am showing you patience. I'm giving you a chance to get some things right. I, I need you to use this time 
to get some things right. I, I'm extending you grace. I'm extending patience to you. And, and, and watch this right here. What God is really doing is God is eliminating excuses. Because somebody's going to say, Lord, if 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 I would have known that this is what you were doing, God, I would have gotten saved. But the ultimate aim of God's patience, the, the ultimate end game of God's patience is that we might have salvation. That he's eliminating excuses. You had time. And when we stand before God, the lost and the saved, when we stand before God, the tape of our lives will be replayed and God will remind us of every deed, every word, every thought that was done in this body. God will remind us, I gave you time. I was patient, waiting on you to get yourself together. I was waiting on you to stop playing games. I was waiting on you to seek me while I may be found. He said, I'm not wishing, I'm not wanting that anyone should perish, but all would come to God through repentance. In other words, repentance simply means I change my mind about God. When I repent, it means I do a 180. I turn around. At one time, I thought I didn't need God, but I repented, and now I recognize I do need him. I thought I could save myself, but I repented and I saw that it's only through Jesus Christ. And so what happens is God said, I'm giving you time. I'm giving you, I'm giving you space. I'm patiently, I'm long suffering. And the reason why I am staying my hand is because I want you to be saved. Watch this right here. He said. He said, and the same way that I'm saved, you're saved, he said, I want you to let somebody see that type of long suffering in your life. Let me ask you this question. How long did God have to wait on you? See, because we, we got this microwave mentality now. And we want people to come in the church already ready to fire and aim and shoot. But how long did it take God to really get us where we are now? How many times did, did God have to clean you up because you got in and fell off and fell off again? He picked you up. How long? How many relapses did you have? How long did God have to wait on you? But now you've gotten saved. Now you're over in the church. Now you got a little time under your belt. Now you can quote three or four verses. And now you don't understand why nobody else is getting saved. And you sent us and folks to hell now. But you forget that God was patient with you. God, none of us, I don't, I dare say this, none of us came to God the very first time we heard the message. God had to work on us. He had to send some storms in some of our lives. Some people had to walk away from us. We had to go through some heartache and pain. Some of us had to go through some, some trauma in our life before we heard the voice of God calling. And then now we've gotten to say, woo! Now we over in the kingdom <laughs> and we can't have patience and long suffering towards somebody else. How dare you? If God had to wait while we all meander through life, he had to wait on us. Just like that woman at the well. The Bible says that Jesus sat by the well and he waited for that woman to come. And that's how God is waiting on us to do the same thing for other people. You, you, you just, you, you've got to show patience when you're dealing with people. And sometimes you can't do the right thing. And it's the reason why is because you're not exercising your patience. You're not long suffering. 
You just want everything now, 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 now. And people can't meet your expectation, so now you just go off again. Just got the job, and you wonder why you ain't got no vacation time yet. Get somewhere and sit down. Come on, somebody. Let's look at some examples of, of, of men, because we can all say God, God was long suffering. But look at, you all remember David. My God. David was patient. David went out there. He was a shepherd boy. He killed Goliath. He came and laid his gifts and his talents. He laid his abilities as a warrior at the feet of Saul. He submitted himself to Saul. And watch what happened. They go out to battle. They go out to war. And the people saw the anointing of God on David's life. And the women begin to sing. The women begin to sing. Saul has killed his thousands. But David has killed tens of thousands. And Saul, this insecure king, Saul, this, this weak example of a man of God, Saul put it in his heart from that day forward to kill David. He wanted David dead. Threw a javelin at David, spear at him. David dodged it and he left. Chased him, had armies patrol chasing David. David over in the Amalekites camp playing crazy to try to get the king of the Amalekites to give him refuge, to get away from Saul, the king that he was willing to serve, the king that he faithfully served. Watch this right here. But God was developing patience in David. And watch what happened. David was so good that David, even though Saul was trying to kill David, there were several opportunities where David had an opportunity to kill Saul. He sleep in a cave and David go up and cut part of his cape off, his robe off. And, 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 and he held it up on, when he got a great distance from Saul, he held, he's showing Saul, I could have killed you. I could have taken your life, but Saul wouldn't relent. And what I'm trying to show you is that God was trying to show David. God was trying to fashion David just like he's fashioning us. That there are people around us that we could damage. We could hurt them with our mouths. We could damage their reputation. We could wound them financially. But God is trying to show us, listen, I want you to learn from what David did. Every time you can hurt somebody, it doesn't mean you should. Look what happened. Only after that, only after David had gone through everything and he exemplified a slowness to avenge wrong. Woo! Boy, when God, when God deals with you, 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 you say, you know what, man? <laughs> I could have got you, bro. I could have got you. I, I could have taken you out, but I held my peace. Boy, I, I could have said something that, that would have crushed you, but I held my peace. I I, I could have I could have done some things. I could have withheld some. I, I, I could have done all a myriad of things I could have done or said or put into motion. But because God is working on me, I'm gonna let God handle this right here. And watch what happened. It was only after then that second or uh, first Samuel 13 uh, and 14, the A clause says, but now your kingdom shall not continue. Here God is talking to Saul now. David could have killed Saul, but God says, touch not my anointed. And David understood what God was saying. And even when Saul was trying to kill David, David revered the word of God. And so he patiently waited. And watch what happened. God tells Saul now, your kingdom shall not continue. 
the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. Y'all better hear me tonight. There are some things that we're going to forfeit. There are some things that we're going to lose because we're trying to take somebody else out. And then on the other side, there are some things we're going to gain. David gained the kingdom that Saul once ruled. He became the king of Judah and northern Israel, southern Israel. He combined them and reunited the kingdom. Why? Because he was a man after God's heart. He was slow. He wasn't quick to try to get revenge. And some of us right now, you are messing yourself up trying to get even with folk. Y'all better hear me tonight. You, you so you so bent on, I'm going to show them. And you're missing out on blessings. Hear me now. Somebody put this on the comment line. You're missing out on blessings trying to teach somebody else a lesson. And God is saying, you're missing out on what I want to show you, what I could be doing in your life, because you're trying to get even with somebody. God has said, be patient, David. Be patient, McIntosh. Be patient, Green Grove. Because I'm looking for people after my own heart. Woo! This, this, this is good, y'all. This is good. I'm about to shout myself now. Watch this. So is it necessary? Is there a necessity for long time? Is there a necessity for me to be patient? Watch this. Do you want God to be patient with you? Do, do, do you want God to be long suffering with you? He said, he said, the way you, you, you get God to extend mercy to you is that you extend mercy to other people. The way, woo, the way you get God to stay his hand on you is God sees you trying to do the same thing to somebody. Don't y'all remember Jesus told a parable in, 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 in Matthew 18, uh, uh, he told a parable about the unmerciful servant. He, he went to a man and, 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 and told him, sir, I don't, I don't have the money to repay you. And it was a huge sum of money. The Bible said there was a debt that he could not pay. He went to the man and said, and said, I don't, I don't have your money. I, I can't pay you. I don't, I don't, I can't get it. And the man was merciful to him and said, I forgive you the debt. Don't worry about it. And then that same man that had been shown great mercy, he walks out and shows and runs into another man that owes him just a few dollars. And the text says that he grabbed the man by his neck and began to choke him over a few dollars. He had just been forgiven a amount that he could not pay. And he walks out and, and willing to kill somebody and had the man placed in a debtor's prison over a small amount that he eventually could pay. And God said, look at this picture right here. This is a picture of how people are in the world now. Here it is. We owe God a debt that we could never pay. But God was merciful and God paid our debt. He forgave our sin debt through the blood of Jesus Christ. He took care of our sin debt. And then we come out of here after God has been merciful to us. After God has been long suffering toward us, after God has been patient with us, and we walk outside and we act like God has done nothing for us and we are unmerciful with other people. You better give me what you owe me now. I want it now. But you forgot you were begging for mercy yourself not that long ago. Here you are now. You know you needed grace to pay your bills. And somebody told you, just take it, I, I just get it to me when you can. And now all of a sudden, now you can't wait. But God said, listen, 
He said, you better learn. You better learn how to be, be patient and long suffering. Watch this. If we're going to be merciful, if we're going to do this thing, let's, let's look at, look at, look, I'm going to show you this one scripture before I go to the next point. I, I, I wasn't going to do it, but I, I just want y'all to see this scripture here. Look at Colossians chapter three, verse 12. It says, put on then as God's chosen ones. Y'all hear this now. He's talking about putting on something like it's, it's, it's clothing. It's an outer garment. Put on as one, as one, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and what? Patience. Lord, help us. God expects us to be patient with people. Listen to what he says. Verse 13. Bearing with one another. Do y'all hear that? Does anybody on this on this uh, live tonight need somebody at some time in your life? You've needed them to just bear with you. Lord, I can't get it together. Lord, I don't have it together. Lord, I'm struggling and I'm trying, but just show me, give me some time to help me get. My, can you help me get myself together? He says, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. He says, even when there's a fault between you and somebody else, remember what God had to forgive you of. Woo! How you sitting up in the church? How you sitting in the house of God? How you sitting up there with holy hands and, and, and got unforgiveness and a grudge in your heart? He says, forgiving each other. Why? As the Lord has forgiven you. So you must what? You must also forgive. It's not optional, beloved. It doesn't matter. I just don't think. And God is saying, listen, you're short-circuiting your own blessings. Can I tell you all this right here? Can I tell you this right here, church? That sometimes the devil is not trespassing. We give the devil a license to be there because we won't obey what God told us to do. And God is whipping you in your home. He's whipping you in your health. He's whipping you in your job. He's whipping you in your finances. And you don't have sense enough to see. Maybe it's not the devil that's trespassing. Maybe something in my life is giving him permission to go in and out. I've got some things to get, get changed. I need some things to be corrected. And could it be, I'm not bearing with somebody else. I'm not undergird. I'm not helping them. Could it be, I've got a complaint. I've got an issue. I've got an ought with somebody. And instead of forgiving them like God has forgiven me, I'm just holding on to stuff. And God sees all. He knows all. He knows these little cute lies you're telling folks don't work. And we justify our foolishness. We justify our disobedience by blaming it on other people. If they had done this, if they hadn't said that, if they hadn't pushed me to that point. And God is saying, but what did you do? How, how have you offended God? How, how have you done those same things to God? And if God can forgive you, come on here now. How dare you not forgive somebody else? Listen to me. You could be right and wrong at the same time. Yes, you had a right to be offended. You had a right to be hurt. But you're wrong because you won't let the thing go. And so you're wearing out the patience. You're, you're, and and you're, you're working on the long suffering of God. That's the only reason he hadn't dealt with you. And so he's doing things. He's allowing things to come up in your life while he's being patient to try to get you to turn. Woo! Teach Macintosh. Teach Macintosh. How? Watch this right here. Do we need to do this? Why do we need to maintain patience? Because we need patience if we're going to operate in the unity of the spirit. We, we can't stay together. Let, can, come on in here, y'all. Don't you know somebody 
is going to say something to you that's going to upset you. <laughs> Somebody is going to do something to you that upsets you. Somebody going to look at you the wrong way. Somebody going to overlook you. Somebody is going to reject you. Somebody is going to step on your new suede shoes. And if we don't have long suffering and patience, then what we'll do is we'll be a body of people that are always trying to get even with people we're supposed to be patient with. Woo! He said, he said, listen, let me show you what I'm talking about. In Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 4 and 1. It says, there I therefore a prisoner of the Lord. This is Paul talking, talking to the church at Ephesus. I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. Hear this now. With all humility and gentleness and what? Patience. Y'all see that? Patience. Why do I need patience? Look what he said. Bearing with one another in love. Bearing with one another. That means that sometimes people are going to get on your wrong side. But rather than write them off, you got to treat the people the way you want to be treated. You can't walk around with your holy self acting like you, you got a right to be mean and nasty and cross. You rolling eyes and popping necks and doing all that craziness. And then think that God doesn't see it. And then think that it's not affecting the unity of the body. Because if I'm on your side, then I can't be on the other person's side. And if I'm on the other person's side, I can't be on. You're breaking up the unity in the body. And so you got to get people that you talk to and try to get them to, to, to rationalize and help you feel good about your foolishness. You don't know how they did. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You, 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 no, you don't know. You don't know that God is hearing everything you're saying. God is filtering your words. Come on, help me. God is filtering what you're saying. And look what he said. He says, he says, forbearing one another in love. Look at verse three says, eager to do what? To maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. If we're going to stay together as a body of believers, if we're going to walk together as a, as a church, then, then we've got to come to a place where we learn how to be long suffering and bearing with one another. Oh my God. That means, man, you got to love people for where they are, not where you want them to be. You, you got you to gotta love people. You've got to forgive folks at the same way you would want them to do you. We can't get past that. Same way. How do you want people to treat you? Treat them like that. How do you want people to talk to you? Talk to them the same way. How do you want people, when you're wrong, and all of us going to be wrong at one time or another, when you're wrong, sir, when you're wrong, ma'am, how do you want people to treat you? That's the central question that Christ is asking. If it's okay for you to carry on and do the kind of stuff that we do to one another, how in the world are you now coming back and acting surprised when that same mess keeps happening to you. Woo! Teach Macintosh. Good God from Zion. Paul says, man, y'all got to stay together because when you don't have long suffering, when you don't have patience, he said, you ain't going to bear with one another in love. And what happens when you bear with folks in love? Can I just throw this in here for free? He said, watch this right here. When you, when you, when you bear with one another in love, what happens is the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. In other words, I deal with people according to how I love them. And love will cause me to say, you know what? Man, you messed up. Says you might have messed up. But man, I love you greater than what you did. That's somewhere we all got to grow to. I love you enough, just like God. I love you enough to forgive you. Woo! I, I love you enough. And, and, 
and and and, and that's that's how we're going to develop long suffering it's undergirded by love patience is undergirded by love if you don't love them you won't be patient with them if you don't love the way God told you to love, you will never be long suffering toward other people. It's always what you did right now. I need it now. I want retribution now. I want payback now. I want to be even now. And God is saying, you're wondering why are you going through hell right now in your own personal walk? Could it be? God is allowing your life to mirror what you're causing in other folks' lives. Help me to preach to teach this thing tonight. So we got to go through love. Look what it, love does what? Love is what's going to get us there, y'all. You cannot say you love me and pray for my demise at the same time. You, can't, you cannot say that you love me and praying that I fall at the same time. You, you can't say that you love me and wishing evil on me at the same, I hope, I hope this happened to him. You can't love. Jesus said, listen, you can't even say that you love Jesus and hate your brother. He said, you see them every day and you've never seen me. He said, if you say you hate them, you say you can't stand them. He said, but you turn around and say that you love me. He said, you're a lie and the truth is not in you. God is not playing games when it comes to love and forgiveness. He's not playing games. He's not leaving room to be misunderstood. The only question is, ma'am, sir, are you going to be obedient and eat the fruit of the land? Or are you going to be stiff-necked and hard-hearted and die in the wilderness? That's the only option. There is no middle ground. There is no half in, halfway out. He said, you've got to learn that your suffering, your long suffering, your patience is undergirded by love. How can I, pastor, how can I do that? Because you love God. How can I forgive? How can I not walk away from folks? How can I be, be, be merciful to these people? Because of the love of God. This is not overnight. It's something that God, I position myself so God can develop it and grow it in me. And watch this right here. I hear the little comments. I hear them. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear the little comments. I hear it. Folk laughing. Ah, whatever. But I'm just trying to tell you. You know what I'm doing now? I'm working as an agent of God's long suffering. <laughs> I'm working tonight as an agent to God's patience. Because God is eliminating another excuse that you have. Because now, when we stand before God, God can pull up the tape. On this ninth day of February, 2022, he can pull up the tape and say, he told you right there what I wanted you to do. And you got off that call. Watch this right here. You got off and you said, I'm going to still do what I think I want to do. Patience. Long suffering. It costs. How do we do it? Love is long suffering. If you got children, if you got if you've been married, you know that love, you gotta suffer long. <laughs> love, love, love suffers long. And if we don't get this thing down in our spirit, watch this right here. Look at first Corinthians. I'm trying to finish this up. Y'all be with me. At first Corinthians chapter 13. And let me show you what this love would do. Let me show you what love will come. You can't be patient if you don't love people. You, you can't be patient if you don't have a love for God in your heart. He said, what? Love is patient. Love is kind. Stop talking about you got the love of God and you treating people the way that you treat them. Stop talking about you got the love of God and, and, and the love that you have lets you still cut up and, and hold grudges and do stuff. So. Stop saying you got the love of God. Because the love of God is patient. That's the first thing out the block God says. My love and love, because God is love. Patience is the first thing. Patience, kindness. Woo! God help me to be patient with people that I want to put my hands on. Y'all don't hear me. I'm just trying to tell you. Help me to love folk that God, everything in me want to just go off on them. 
but God help me to be patient, help me to be kind. And can I tell you, listen to this beloved, if we could have done it without God, we would not need the Holy Ghost. It is only through the power of God that we're able to do these things that God is telling us. He said, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy wanting what other folks have. Love does not boast. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude with your rude self. Good God Almighty. Love, it does not insist. Hear me, somebody. It does not insist on its own way. I'm going to do it like I want to do it. I don't care what God said. It is not irritable or resentful. Lord, help us tonight. He said the love of God does not display those kind of characteristics. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It's not boastful. It's not envious. It doesn't insist on just bulldogging and having its own way. Woo! God, help us. Irritable, resentful. You sitting in the house of God full of resent towards somebody. You mad because God keep blessing them in spite of you. Woo! And don't you know God got a way of doing that? Ooh, ooh, God will keep blessing them same folk. You want them to stumble, you want them to fall down, but God keeps blessing them anyway. And you can argue and say they ain't this and they low down, they dirty, but you can't explain why God keep blessing them. He keeps on using them. He keeps on opening doors for them. And what he's showing you is, I'm not waiting on you to get yourself together before I bless somebody else. That's all God is doing. He's blessing them in spite of us. <laughs> Woo, help me teach this thing tonight. Watch this. We need this. And, 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 and how do we do it? We do it through the love, through prayer. God, help me to pray, get my prayer life together. God help me to spend some time. Midday Bible study today. I was asked the question, Pastor, how what's the right way to pray? Do I pray out loud? Do I pray to myself? Good question. I want to tell you this tonight in my closing. Listen, if we're ever going to learn how to be patient, if we're ever going to walk in long suffering, if we're ever going to operate in love, forbearing one another then we've got to learn how to talk to God. And I'm not talking some of these corny prayers that we hear folk pray every Sunday. But I'm talking about talking to God for real. See, my God, when, 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 when you're going through something, you don't have no time for our Father, which are, no, no, no. You say, Lord, it's me. Lord, I need your help. God, I'm trying, I'm struggling with this thing. God, I know you told me to forgive. I know, and I want to forgive, but God, this thing is, 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 is pulling on me. And every time I think I'm about to let it go, God, I get reminded of it. So God, I need you to help me to forget and to get past what I can't get over. God, I need you, I need you to strengthen me. And you got to talk to God. Not on these cute prayers. You talk to him. Father, this is, this, I need your help. I keep saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. I keep snapping. I keep, I'm too impatient. I, I'm rude at times. I'm, I'm, I'm arrogant at times. I'm puffed up at times. And God, I need you to help me be the kind of Christian and child of God that you're calling for. You got to talk to God. And summertime, we're just we getting out on our knees and nodding off. You half sleep and get up, amen. And you hadn't said nothing to God. God said, put me in remembrance of my word. God said, I'll put a gate over your mouth if you let me. He said, I'll cause you to forget the things that, that, that the, the years that the canker worm and the locust destroyed. He said, I'll help you get past all of that. 
I'll help you get past the stuff that, that's plaguing you, the stuff that people keep reminding you. I'll help you get past the wounds in your life. But you got to talk to God. And sometimes our issue with other people is the same issue we have with God. We don't know how to talk to people. We don't know how to be at, be, be at, have a disagreement without falling out. And God is saying, listen, if you want me to help you, you got to learn how to open your mouth. You know how to get folks told. You know how to cuss folks out. You know how to go on your job and raise hell. You know how to do all that foolishness in the church. But when it comes to God, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You a lie? No, you lied. Talk to him. Be honest with God. God, I need you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to slap the devil out of somebody. If you don't keep me, I'm going to mess up my own blessing. God, if you don't stay my hand, God, put the handcuffs on me so I don't put my don't put my hands on what you're trying to fix. you got to talk to God. God, help me to help somebody else. <laughs> and we got to stop acting like we've got it all together. What good is it? to fool me and to fool others, to have everybody in the world fooled, but we can't fool the one that owns heaven and hell. God says, I, I want to save. I want to deliver. But you got to talk to me. I'm long suffering and I'm giving you time. I'm patient. I'm giving you time to get yourself together to call on my name turn and you've got to commit yourself to doing that very thing amen i pray this lesson has blessed you tonight amen look at this last verse here and i'm done the lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love Psalms 148, uh, 145, verse number eight. God is patient. God is full of, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm merciful right now. I'm just waiting. I'm giving you time. I'm giving you time. I'm slow to anger. I should have been hot with you, but I'm slow to anger. But we got to get ourselves together and be serious about our relationship with God. With God. You'll never do the right thing if you don't operate in the patience that God requires. You'll always be saying the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong person. Amen. I pray this lesson has been a blessing to you tonight. Uh, I pray it encourages you to look at yourself. Don't say so-and-so should have been on here tonight. No, you you were here. You were here, God, God knows he knew who was gonna hear this lesson tonight, tomorrow, the week after. He already knows. And I, listen, and you were on here tonight by divine appointment. Some of you were surfing through and just stopped and listened. By divine appointment. And God got you here so you can hear. You need to be patient. You need to develop some long suffering. You're too hot-headed. You're too quick-tempered. God's going to do some things to stretch your temper, to make you long-tempered. He's going to do something to cool off your rage. But you've got to work in, with, and through him. Amen? Amen. I, I, I pray this lesson that has, has, has encouraged you. Amen. I see you, Sister Glover. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. I thank you so much for the encouraging word. But I, listen. Go back, and, and there it is. There it is right there. Thank you so much, sis. Sister Reagan, look at self, self-inventory. Lord, help me to see me. Not, not, not all that other stuff, but God, help me to see me. Help me to be a better me tomorrow than I was today. And that's what it's about. And, and so we're going we're gonna to continue calling these things out. What you say, Sister Carrie, keep on teaching, keep on preaching, Pastor. You are truly helping me in the name of Jesus. Self-examination. I see you, Sister Carrie.
That's what it's about. Uh, Sonia, I see you. We, we got we to be serious about our own self. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I see you. Thank you so much. Stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. What's up, Mike? God bless you, Michael McIntosh. Bless you, man. Dab, I see you in there. Amen. Stay encouraged. I'm telling you all, we can do this thing if we work together in Christ and work with the Spirit of God. God can do some things. We can help. We can keep folks encouraged to be their better selves. Amen. I'm, I'm inviting you, amen, to, uh, uh, to be with us on Sunday morning. Oh, my God. Did God bless the house this past Sunday? I mean, God just showed up in a dramatic and powerful way. Souls got saved. Lives were impacted. I mean, it was just fantastic to see how God was blessing in the house. Amen. And, and I'm telling you, I expect nothing less this coming Sunday. I, I'm telling you, I'm expecting. I'm expecting. I've been looking for it. I'm looking for it. I am looking for God to do it. So meet us at 10 o'clock. Matter of fact, we're going to meet at 9, 930. 915 actually for prayer. 930, we're going to go straight into the pool. And we're going to be baptizing these brothers. Amen. These five brothers that gave their life to Christ on Sunday. We're going to be going into the pool with them. Amen. And, 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 and bringing them, ushering them into the kingdom of God officially. Amen. 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 And, and, and you're right, Minister Griggs, he did. He prayed some fire up in that, didn't he? Amen. God bless you all. But but I'm inviting you to come out to Green Grove on Sunday morning. Amen. At, 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 at be there for our, our, our baptism be at 930 and our morning worship will start promptly at 10. Amen. And we're going to have a Holy Ghost good time. Uh, if you if you don't want to come to our church, amen, Pastor Dr. Askew will love to have you come and, and fellowship with them. Amen. Um, uh, what's up, preacher? Michael Battle. Let's bless you, man. Uh, uh, Pastor Askew would love to have you come over and worship with friendship at the same place, uh, just on the other side of the, uh, the, the, the campus, amen, uh, with friendship at 10 o'clock as well. We, we would love to have you. Amen. And we're, we're going to have just a good time. I'm telling you, people can say what they want to say. But boy, they got a lie to say God ain't blessing in the house. <laughs> they got to lie. I don't care what they say. They can say whatever they want to say, but they got a lie to say God is not doing some wonderful things in, at, at Green Grove. And I'm appreciative to what God is doing. Uh, for Green Grove, our, our members, amen. We, 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 uh, we're asking you to please, ma'am, and please, sir, uh, those that can and will uh, deacon adultery uh, uh, and 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 his family are are, are funeralizing their deacon adultery's brother tomorrow uh, at two o'clock at the Parkway Memorial Garden. Uh, that's on on I think that's on Carl Vincent in Warner Robins. Hey man, it's going to be at at. at um, uh, it's going to be at three tomorrow. I'm sorry, at three tomorrow. The, the graveside service will be at three uh, tomorrow. Amen. And and we're asking um, those that can and will to come out and be with the family. Amen. Um, on um, tomorrow there in Warner Robins. Amen. Amen. So continue to pray for them. Reach out and encourage the family. Continue to pray for our church mothers. Amen. Mother. Kendrick and Mother, uh, ask you, amen, that God will continue to bless and prosper them in their health. Amen. Amen. There it is. There it is. I see it with my own eyes. God bless you. Make sure if you haven't done so tonight, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you let me know you were in class with me so I can see who was here with me. Amen. Um, and also, uh, if you're so inclined, please hit that like button. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you. And let me give you something to go. I know y'all are waiting on that. Let me give you something to 
Uh, um, amen. Here we go. It's Calvin. He'll work it out. God bless you all. Have a fantastic night. We love you. We praise God for you. Stay encouraged. DJ D Mac. We love you. God bless you.